All right, I had to change costumes real quick. Thank you very much for your patience. All right, let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for giving us the opportunity as lay people to help out with your liturgy and bring your Father glory through the Holy Mass. I ask that you can be with each one of the people gathered here today, that they can uh, continue to uh, foster a spirit of devotion and holiness in their own lives and bring that forward to the Holy Mass. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so everyone found the sign-up sheet, email and name, everything that's good to do. So, all right. Okie dokie. So the first thing, so these are the revised Eucharistic ministers of Holy Communion duties. So, um... I would like a volunteer to read this first paragraph, okay? Okay, very good. This will explain everything you need to know. All right, listen up. As of June 14th, 2021, the ordinary minister of Holy Communion is the bishop, priest, or deacon. We give thanks to the changes in Vatican II, which allow the laity, that's you, to participate and administer the Eucharistic, excuse me, the Eucharist as well. This makes you extraordinary ministers of this sacrament. That being said, you are all extraordinary people nonetheless. Next Each one. host, or even a fragment of a host, contains the body, blood, and soul, and divinity of our Savior Jesus Christ, and should be handled and treated as well, with reverence and dignity. Very good. So technically, you are all extraordinary ministers because the ordinary ministers, as she said, were the bishop, the priest, and the deacon. But because of Vatican II changes, you are all invited up to the altar and get to touch the body of Christ. That's a huge honor. And so um, that, with that knowledge, like I want you guys to like know that what you're doing is super important and a super huge privilege to do. So um, I'm happy to invite you to do that. So um, a lot of things are going to stay the same. I remember, as I say in the back, we are not going back to normal, okay? We are going forward. We want to go better than normal. We want to be uh, do our daily duties in the liturgy with gratitude and with joy rather than just how we were before, you know? So uh, some of the changes are, some of this might be new for you, some of this might be the same, but whatever it may be, um, I invite you to just enter into it completely. So I would like two volunteers to demonstrate, other than anime, um, two volunteers to demonstrate what we're going to be doing. Oh, Mary. Very good, thank you. And Terry, very good. Okay, come on up. So uh, your job starts, yeah, Mary, I'm serious. Yeah, come on up. Okay, so your job starts when uh, the Lamb of God starts. So you will approach the altar when the Lamb of God starts. Wait for all three of you. Oh, sorry, sorry, we need another one. So Barb, you wanna come up? All right, very good. Okay, so wait for everyone to come up and then all bow together. Very good. Okay, yep, then you'll come up just as you've seen before at other masses and come and stand behind me right in this tabernacle area. Okay, very. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, so Germex first, you know, sanitize. Just be, yep, just be cautious, yep. Okay, so after that, behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. I'm not worthy blah, 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 you know, you know, all that. So um, I will go to the altar servers, body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ, and then to you, body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ. Okay, very good. Then I will give you each one, you will have a ciborium. It's not just a bowl. The ciborium is the gold bowl that holds the body of Christ. Okay? This is called a ciborium. 
The plural is ciboria, okay? I just, I, I love Latin, okay? So then I will give each one of you those, and then once I lead the way, so follow me, we will all decide where we stand, and depending on, as you see from the instructions, depending on how my, which side has more children, that's who I choose to be on, okay? So, yep, very good, Mary. Um, so you'll be, let's say this ch side has more children. I think you look, you look more childlike than that side, okay? Okay, so um, I will stand here so that I can give blessings. Um, Terry will stand here. And then if you are not in the middle aisle, you will stand back here. So as close as you can to this thing so that you don't prevent, you can prevent bottlenecking, okay? Because otherwise, if you come here, and then it's, it just kind of clogs the, the whole traffic, you know? So, okay, cool. So you'll stand as close to the little bar there you can, the end of the pew. Okay. So when someone comes forward for communion, one of the things, so right now there's no precious blood. Right now there is no wine. We're not offering that right now. That's based on the bishop's decision. So we will not be doing that until further notice, but when someone comes up, and sometimes they will either say, amen, or they'll say, so that means you put the tongue, or put the host as gently as you can on their tongue, and sometimes, hopefully, the person is aware enough that they can inhale in and don't breathe hot breath, amen, <sighs> and then like, breathe on your hand, but you know what? That's just how it is. So um, so then you place the, the host gently on their tongue, and then they move on, okay? If someone comes up and they have their arms crossed, if they are a Protestant, the reason we do not offer intercommunion, the reason we do not have Protestants or anyone who's non-Catholic is not because we're exclusive, but because, and I made a YouTube video about this, uh, the whole point is because you are devoted to your own church. And so by receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, that's saying, I believe in the Pope, in Mary, in the saints, in everything that the Catholic Church teaches. And we don't want to have people making that kind of commitment at that time, you know? And so if they come forward like this, the thing that you should do is hold your hand above their forehead and say, may Almighty God bless you, okay? I forgot to put that in the sheet, but may Almighty God bless you. So Jesus loves you is nice. Um, God bless you is nice, but I just think it's better for us all to do. May Almighty God bless you, okay? Very good. If you need a pen, it's right here, okay? Anyone need a pen to make notes? Anything? That's your job. Okay, very good. To hand out if anyone needs a pen. Anyone need a pen? Okay. Oh, look what we have here. Ooh, look at this. Do you know what this is? What is this? It's a Cheerio. A Cheerio. Do you know what a Cheerio is to me? This is called the Seeds of Faith. That means that there was a young person here, and that means that we have future of the church. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, very good. I'm all about that. Okay, so, um, so once again, so if someone comes forward, they'll either say, amen, or they will go like, and then you drop it in their mouth, or like this, cross their arms, and then you'll say, may Almighty God bless you. Okay? Very good. So once we're finished, the main congregation has gone through the line. One extraordinary minister of Holy Communion will walk back to distribute in the back to those who cannot walk up the aisle. The ushers will indicate this. So um, I think we'll just dialogue when we're up there about, or you'll just see who's done first. We'll just go back and we'll all kind of be aware of that. So I'm a jazz guy. I'm all about improvisation, you know, so whatever you see, uh, you just kind of react to. Okay. Um, so someone will go back there and the ushers will say, yep, there's three people here who cannot walk forward. And then we will take care of them. 
Um, one extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, either myself, whoever's done first, and who doesn't go to the back, will come over and either sit here or stand off to the side because it's, it's extremely distracting. I've seen this before when someone will come over to the piano player and stand right here and just like wait to give them the host, you know? So when the piano player is playing, I've seen this before. I've seen it when they go, and then like keep playing. Like, no, no, like leading worship and leading the song is part of your job. And then also part of devotion is receiving the Eucharist. And so to like make those two like connect like that, like that's not right, you know? So um, that's why I want uh, whoever is going to deliver to the um, singer or the cantor and the accompanist to just wait, stand off to the side or have a seat in the pew and just wait. Make sense? Very good. Okay. So when you have finished distributing in your line or to the back or to the uh, musicians, you'll come up here and then you'll pour it into the handled ciboria. The handled ciborium will be right here and then pour it right into it, okay? So it's um, easy to just like, it's easy and simple to just take Jesus and then just like, okay, just walk away. It's like, so we should treat Jesus in the presence of the host in the Eucharist as if it was an infant. So would you leave your infant right here, just set a baby right there and then just walk away? It's like, no, you wouldn't. You know, you would like carefully take as much care as you can and pour it, you know, pour him into the, the ciborium. So then I'll take care of all that later, purif purification, etc. cetera. Um, so then once you have poured uh, the remaining hosts into the ciborium, then you can go back to your pew. No need to bow. No need to bow. So here's the rule. When you approach for the first time and bow, there's no need to do it as you leave, okay? Let's just keep that simple. Okay, and then return to your pew. No need to bow when exiting the altar area. So here's a change. Five minutes, exactly five minutes before mass, I will come from my confessional because that starts adoration and confession starts 45 minutes before every single mass daily and weekly. You know that. Um, so I will come here and I will pray with you all. So I would love for every single one of you to wait in the back, in the sacristy, in that little room and socialize as needed. Um, and then we'll pray together because this emphasizes and strengthens our spirits and our bodies. And it reminds us that we are all have different jobs based on what we've been assigned in the body of Christ, okay? So the lectors, the altar servers, the priest, and the Eucharistic ministers will all be there, okay? Cool. All right, that's all. Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, any questions? Yes. Um, no, just so she asked if you can stack the ciboria. Um, I, I don't know. I would say leave them separate because I'll take care of them each. Okay. Yeah. For, I mean, because sometimes you can scratch the gold on them, you know. So I would say just leave them on the altar. So pour and then just leave it right there on the altar. So, okay. Any other questions? Um, sorry, Jerry's first. <laughs> Uh huh. Just leave leave individually. So once you pour the body of Christ into the ciborium, go back to your pew. You're done. You are done. 
and then I will take care of putting it back in the tabernacle. Okay? Yes. Okay, so is the person at the end of the pew the one who serves the accompanist and the musician or the singer? Um, I don't, that's not really assigned. Um, I didn't really think through, I'm not very good at logic or <laughs> thinking through things. Yeah, so I would say, uh, I would love it if, if it was up to me, I would be up there just waiting patiently for everyone to return in the silence. Um, so if, if you see that opportunity to arise, then if you're sitting here waiting, then you're the one that does that, okay? So it's going to be kind of improvised, okay? Make sense? Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so if someone comes up, and I have this at few, you guys, you would be surprised at the amount of first communions that I give out at a funeral because people are unaware of our theology, you know. So when someone comes up and they have their arms crossed and then you give them the blessing, um, I mean, do as much as you can in that moment to say, okay, that's it, like, keep moving, you know. So, yeah, I mean... And then maybe if you can catch them afterward, then like maybe have a conversation with them, you know? So if someone crosses their arms, then we're assuming that they are Protestant and that they are devoted and loyal to another church. So you can give them the blessing and then tell them to move on, okay? What's your other question? Oh yes, very good. So if you drop a host, what I think the first thing to do if you drop it, to pick it up and consume it yourself, okay? It's just kind of a, a charity and a host, like if you're a host of your own house, you know, and a piece of chicken falls on the floor, it's either like, well, I'm going to eat that one or I'll throw it away, you know? So if you drop a host, it's like either eat it right away, just munch on it, or you put it in your hand and just save it until afterward, you know? So that's what I do. I see hosts have been, been dropped multiple times. And then the person, of course, depending on their devotion, is absolutely horrified. You know, sometimes if you have someone with arthritis who can't really hold their hand or if they're shaking or whatever, it's like they drop it, you know, so that's okay. Um, then I just say, hey, you know what? Christ fell three times, so <laughs> it's okay, you know. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So. I would say either cons I would say the first option is to consume it yourself, or uh, save it in your hand for later and give it to me if you're not comfortable with it. Okay. Okay. Yes, Barb. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If they if they say yeah, give me that. You know, give me that. Then yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just kind of a being a host. You know. So if the person wants it, then give it to them, you know? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm usually quicker to the, ke to the pull, so I usually can bend down and grab it quicker than they can, usually. So, yeah, just, and that's part of the improvisation, is trying to decide what in that moment is needed for reverence versus the humanity, you know? Yeah, sure, yep, if they take it, yep. If they're faster than you and they take it, then all right, cool, they received, all right, very good, yep. All right, any other questions? So, um, it's kind of fuzzy, I'm sorry about that, but it's kind of fuzzy because uh, some of this has started now, like for lectors, for instance, um, a lot of the lector stuff has already started, but all of these will take effect for sure in August once Connie sends you the new schedule.
okay? So um, if someone's not there in the back for praying, that's okay. Uh, during these next two months, if someone's not uh, doing all these things. So the point is, once August hits, all this will start, okay? Yeah, oh yeah, you can start it now, yeah, yeah, to just give people the example of what's kind of expected, you know, so. Okay. Any other questions? If you have anything else you think of later, take these home. Uh, we have tons of extras, and then, or you can email me or call the office for scheduling and questions, okay? All right, thank you, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye. All right, so everyone is getting the sign-in sheet, and everyone has a revised lector duties, right? Very good. Let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of being able to proclaim your Father's holy word to our people. Help us to uh, grow in devotion, prayer, and holiness so that we can make your message known to the community. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, could I get a volunteer to read the first paragraph test uh, of your sheet? Volunteer. Okay. Very good. Thank you. As of June 14th, 2021, being able to participate in the Mass as a lector at the Mass is a privilege and an honor. You are not merely reading, you are proclaiming the holy word of God. The words of sacred scripture are truly living and the salvation history contained in these words are just waiting to be unleashed upon the hearts and minds of the people listening through your proclamation. It is important to take time throughout the week to prepare, read, pray, study, work on pronunciations. If you look over the reading right before Mass, it is too late. All readings can be found in the book in the sacristy. This has good contact text for the passage and also pronunciation guides or found on the daily readings tab at usccb.org. Very good, thank you so much. So, um, as she said, uh, you are not readers. You are not just, oh, let's just read the thing that's in front of me, you know? The whole point is for you to proclaim the Word of God. You are an integral part of the liturgy. The liturgy means the work of the people. And so for you to come forward and to either be a sacristan or a lector or a Eucharistic minister, you are doing the work of the people. That's what I do every single day and every single Sunday, and it's a joy. And so um, you are not merely reading, you are proclaiming, okay? So um, what you can do is either find the readings, and I encourage uh, the Monday, like, so my favorite part about Mondays is not only is it my day off and I don't have to do anything, but um, the fact that I read and look over what the upcoming Sunday's readings are and then try to like come up with a homily, you know? So that's its own job. But so this book called The Workbook for Lectors and Gospel Readers, this will always be in the sacristy on the counter. So if you want to come and just swipe it for a week, take it home, read it, look at it, that's great. If you want to steal a hymnal, that's great. Read it. Look at it. Or if you want to go to usccb.org, which is the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops, you can easily find every single daily reading. And that's part of it that's cool to me, is that that's why I, I emphasize uh, for school masses, 
is, is that we, we can't just do what we want, you know, because everyone in Alabama or New York or Colorado is reading the same readings that we are and that unites us as a people, even more so on a Sunday. And so um, the whole schedule of readings, you could look years in advance. So the uh, cycle of readings goes daily readings are A and B, sorry, one and two, and then um, based on the year that we're in, and then the weekend readings are um, A, B, and C. Currently, we're in year B. So once 2022 hits, starting in Advent, we will be in year C. And so that changes uh, like the things that we have to preach about, and it changes the things that we have to look at. So anyway, so I would like two volunteers to come up and to volunteer and or, uh, demonstrate. Oh, very good. Okay, cool, cool. We have a volunteer. All right, Ethan? Oh, yeah, very good. Thank you. Okay, so once it comes time, lector one, when adoration has, okay, yep, just stand right there and I'll describe. Once adoration has concluded and the lights are turned on, Father will walk by with the servers and lector two. So you're lector one, you're lector two. Okay, so lector one, come up here. Lector two, come back here. All right, so benediction has concluded. That means benediction is sign of the cross with the monstrance, like we've been doing. Then I'll put Jesus away in the tabernacle. And then I'll come over and turn on the lights. All right, very good. So then, lector two, come on. Father and the altar servers will walk, and then I'll give you a thumbs up for you to start, and then we'll walk back here. Let's just stay right here. So, uh, Lector 1 will read the welcome and the mass intention. Today, this Sunday, we are celebrating the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. So, um, it's important to read it like yourself. So, if you fake it, like a radio announcer, today is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and our intention is Barb Martinek. Like, no, don't, like, read like yourself, you know? Like, do what is, comes natural to you, you know? But you also don't want to read it like a, like it's a nursing home menu announcement, like, today's mass intention is Barb Martinek, and it's the 14th Sunday. Of, so, yeah, just, like, read what is natural to you, okay? Make sense? Cool. So once you do that, then the musicians will start, and then we'll process in. This is what the second lector will do. Whoever's listed second, they will hold the gospel book like this, okay? At eye level. The bottom part will be eye level, okay? Do you think you can do that? Okay, very good. All right, that's the holy word of God. That's the words of Jesus Christ. Can you handle that? Okay, good. All right. So um, then we'll walk up forward. So uh, follow me. Pretend that we've just processed up. If you are Lector 2, uh, you will hit, hit the stairs here. Okay? Then the altar servers will hit here. I will genuflect. The other altar server will genuflect. The cross bearer will just bow their heads because it looks silly to have Jesus you know, like fly, flying down. So then you will just bow your head, okay? Just bow your head. Very good, just like that. And then you will come up here, and there will be a wooden brown stand right here for you to put the gospel on for me to grab later, okay? All right, I'll take that. Make sense? Oh, you can go back to your pew. Sorry. All right. Okay, then we have the collect, 
which is the opening prayer. Let us pray. And the altar server brings forth the book for me. Then I read it. And then we all sit down as we listen to the words of Holy Scripture. Okay, same two volunteers. Come on up. All right, very good. Yep. So what you're going to do is walk forward to the steps, hit, and then wait for the other person. Okay? Very good. And then, okay, he hit, and then bow, and then go up. So lector one will go up to the ambo. That's what this thing is called, the ambo. And then you will go have a seat. So this is called the ambo. So all the petitions, all the readings, and all the announcements will be read from this. Just keep it simple, okay? So you'll proclaim the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then you will sit down right next to him. Hopefully you guys are friends or he doesn't smell bad, okay? All right, good. So then we'll have the responsorial psalm. And then after that comes time for the second reading. So the second lector will come up and say, a reading from this letter of Corephesians, you know, like whatever it is, you know. And then uh, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then you both will exit. And no need to bow. Okay? Just go back to your pews. Okay? So uh, I had a funeral recently. And um, so make sure you put, make sure you, let's see. Okay. Make sure you turn on this red button. I think you all know that. Oh, this red button right here, make sure that it's turned on when you're ready to speak, and then make sure that it's turned off. When you're done. Okay. Um, I had a funeral recently where <laughs> it was very humbling, but a, one of the greatest moments of comedy in my priesthood is the man stood up here for a funeral to read the readings, and then I was sitting at my chair, and he said, oh, a reading from the, a reading from the, then I said, oh, oh, just, just turn the red light on, okay? Push the button, turn the red light on, and he goes, but I'm colorblind. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was the best thing that was needed at that moment. So uh, whatever. Anyway, so make, so make sure that that thing is turned on and you'll be fine, okay? So uh, once it comes time, then uh, I read the gospel. I take the book over here. The altar server puts the brown thing there. Then I do the children's homily, blah, blah, blah. And then I do my own long, boring, stupid homily. And then after that, we have a moment of silence as I invite you all to sit and reflect on what you just heard. And then we'll stand up to do the creed. You can stay sitting, don't worry. So we stand up to do the creed. And then um, I would love it because I grew up in the drama, theater, performing arts, you know, way of thinking. Um, I would love it is... If you, uh, at the words, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church of the creed. So, duck out from your pew one paragraph early. So, if you're reading along, it's the start of the final paragraph of the creed. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That means that you are walking up during those words so that you can already be prepared and that you can already be ready for what is coming next, which is the petitions. And so the petitions will be printed out for you, and they'll be in the binder, which will be up there. Okay? One thing I forgot. Um, so it's okay if you forget this, but you'll know it personally if you forget it. So when the second lector, when you're done reading, and these will all be binder clipped and paper clipped, uh, paper clipped and stuff so that it's open right to where it needs to be at the beginning of Mass. But that little wind right there, as you've noticed, sometimes blows. The Holy Spirit loves to mess with us, you know? And so uh, if, if, if it blows on the wrong reading, then you can look at it and say, this isn't the right one because this is not the one I practiced. 
And the one I practiced is the right one because I'm competent and because I am very, very studious, you know. So then it shouldn't be, but in case it is the wrong reading, then you can look ahead and then you can find the one that it should be. So the second reader, after you're done, you will close the book and place it in the shelf underneath, okay? Very good. So there's something to be said about gospel enthronement. Gospel enthronement. Um, so I just read from the Holy Word of God, like this book itself is clothed in gold, you know? So how easy is it to be like, yeah, whatever. All right, just throw it in there. Be done with it. No, we want to we wanna enthrone it. We want to we want to say that this is something to be looked at and worth presenting, you know? So that's, that's why we do this piece. So if you're the second lector, I know it's the word of God, but this isn't as important as the gospel. So throw it in there um, and then go back to your seat. That way I don't have to do this thing. <laughs> and I've had to do this a few times and it's fine, but it's, Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Okay, let me flip it open. Oh, wait, I gotta hold on. I gotta like like put this thing away. You know, like it's yeah. Anyway, so just if you're the second lector, make sure that you put that put it away. Okay, very good. All right. So um, fast forwarding back to the um, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. You'll come up and you will. Get ready, get situated, get your binder, and get your pages flipped, and then you'll read the petition. So I will say something like, Lord Jesus, hear our prayers. Now we unite our hearts and minds to you. And then you can seamlessly go forward with it, okay? After that, you're done. No more duties for the lector. So um, some of this is different. Some of this has changed. One of the changes is that I would like lectors, Eucharistic ministers, altar servers, and the priest to be exactly five minutes before Mass in the sacristy to join in prayer together because we're all brothers and sisters. We're all workers. We're all participating in the liturgy, liturgia, the Greek word for liturgy is work of the people. And so you are all working to make this thing happen, you know? And so I think it's important that we are all together and we all join in prayer before we start on this work, okay? So five minutes before, you'll be in there, okay? So um, I know it's, guys, I, I'm not the best at logic. I'm not the best at scheduling. So, um, Lecture stuff, as you saw in this past weekend, will start immediately, okay? A few of the other duties will start in August once Connie gets you the schedule, okay? So for everything I've said tonight, it will all start immediately once you're scheduled, all right? Cool. Um, let's see. Like, for instance, sacristans won't start until August. They won't be scheduled until August. But if you're a lector, just hang out back there, you know? We, we did the whole prayer thing before Mass uh, at my former parish in Mason City, and it was really, really beneficial because either they were sitting back there talking, you know, just having fellowship, and then we would pray together, and then we'd go out to the pews, okay? Any questions before we finish up? Yes. Uh, yeah, so if, if you enter the altar area, the, the sanctuary area, yes, bow. But if you're leaving, don't worry about it, okay? Any other questions? All right, thank you so much. Um, if you have any of the questions that you think of, just email me or email Connie or call the office. You know, you know the drill. So, all right, thank you. See you later. All right. Hitting 7 p.m., let us begin in prayer.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us the opportunity to usher in a new generation, a new group of people, and a new church. Help us to uh, continue to have devotion and holiness and commitment towards you and the love that you share with your Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so, um, ushers, thank you for coming tonight. Um, basically, uh, not much has changed with ushers. <laughs> um, as the other ministry descriptions have, a lot, of, a lot has changed since before and during and then after COVID, but a lot of it has stayed the same. So, uh, my my little like plug is that we do not return to normal. We go forward and we get better than normal. So as as great as it is to not see ribbons on these pews, and as great as it is to not have to worry about like social distancing in our church, but the whole point is that we are better than where we came before, and that involves joy and that involves gratitude. So. Um, Ushers, uh, arrive at least 15 minutes before Mass. Um, sign your name in the book, in the sacristy, just like before. By the way, everything you see here will start in August. So if you're an usher right now, keep doing what you've been doing. Just make it work uh, for the next two, one and a half months. And then once August hits is when all this will start. So go in the back and sign in. That way the sacristans know if they need to find someone extra. Um, if there are not four ushers present, um, please recruit someone. So you can help the sacristan who is going to be recruiting someone. You, by virtue of being an usher, can know who is an usher in the pews and then can ask them for help. <clears throat> when weather permits, the doors to the entrances should be propped open. Doors meaning the one's interior. So you never have to prop open the outside doors, um, so the ones in here. So prop open, just make, make everyone feel welcome. Start seating people early. Encourage them to sit up as far as front as possible. As the church fills, people will come forward when they know that there are seats up front. So the idea of filling everyone in front, I know our whole, it's ingrained in our genetics as Catholics as to sit as far back as possible, you know? And we don't want to do that because if you sit as close as possible, then for the people who come late, who have either small children or the people who just didn't wake up in time, then they can feel comfortable just sliding in the back, you know? So that's, that's something to encourage. Um, as uh, one usher should be at one of the side doors greeting and seating people, and the other two ushers work together at the main entrance. One should be up front, locating seats and indicating number of places to the other usher in the back, directing people. And if we have something like Christmas and Easter, sometimes we need extra chairs in the back. Sometimes we need extra seats because to fit all the people in here. Because if, if someone's going to be coming and they only go to church twice a year, I would much rather have them be up here rather than sitting down stairs, you know, watching it on a TV screen, because then they could have just as well stayed at home, you know. So um, that's part of your job as well, is to be able to be sensitive to, do we need extra chairs? And those can be found um, to the left, back there, and then, you know, in that back room. So um, during Mass, it is important that the worshiping community see you as examples of faith. So uh, when I grew up, and also when I was on my internship, I witnessed the ushers as this, this kind of band of good old boys that would just stand in the back and just, you know, kind of do their thing and talk and hang out and just converse together all through Mass. Literally, they were standing in the back just talking, you know, while Mass was going on. Like, the whole point is for you to be an example of faith, an example of uh, for all the people who are here. So 
as much as, as it is fun to be an usher and to be part of that gang, you know, like the whole point is for you to be an example of faith and teach others and lead others in your example of how to be a faithful Catholic. Okay? Um, so uh, when it comes time for the offertory baskets, you'll take the baskets up, and I don't really care or haven't thought about if you want to hand them circular baskets or if you want to do the, the um, long sticks, you know, I don't know, whatever works better for you guys. So um, do that. Um, four times a year, there will be a reverse collection, and that will happen after the bread, the wine, and the money have been brought forward because that's just doing two things at once so that I can do my prayers and I can do the stuff with the altar servers while you give out the little slips of paper for the reverse collection. Everyone know what a reverse collection is? Okay, cool. Um, so once again, in August, so right now until August, ushers will be bringing up the collection, the bread, and the wine. Once August hits, then we will be assigning or asking for host families, which is a fun display of small children and their parents bringing up the gifts, okay? So until August, we will all be bringing up the gifts. You as ushers will be doing that. So it's important for the people to come up or for the people to see you coming up and, and me and the altar servers receiving the bread and the wine and then the money which is part of their sacrifice, will be placed here by the altar server. So all you need to do is come forward, hand it to me and the altar servers, and then bow before you leave. Okay? Pretty simple. Um, if there is someone in the back of church who needs the Eucharist, so when the, the uh, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion all scatter and they go to their places, once they're done with the main line, there will be someone who walks back to church, the back of church and then will look to you or one of the ushers and expect to see either on your fingers or in your voice who or how many people need communion in the back because some people are not able to walk forward. And so that communion minister will go to the back and then distribute to them who need it. Okay? Um, at the end of Mass, ushers, again, prop open the doors. That's the inside doors here, those three in the back, or rather four, but three doorways, uh, so that people can leave easily. Then stand by each of the doors, including the side doors, and hand out bulletins. Okay? So that starts immediately. So pick up a pile of bulletins and say, hey, here you go, have a good Sunday, you know? So part of your job and this is what I love about an usher, is that part of your job is being the, the second wave of hospitality. Because we already have the greeters, they're already doing their thing, but then you as ushers, not only like keeping track of the money, keeping track of emergencies, but you're also people in charge who are providing a welcome environment for people who are coming to our church. So, um, Every, probably every three or four weekends, I see someone new, and I know, I'm, I'm up there, and I'm up there, and I'm watching everyone who's new, someone I don't recognize, because there's the regulars, and they have their regular pew, you know, we're Catholics after all, and, uh, but sometimes I see someone who I've never seen before, and then I make a point to go to them after Mass, and figure out their name, figure out who they are, what they're doing here, you know. Um, I remember one time, uh, someone said, Hey father, did you see that? Did you see that new person here? Who the heck was that? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't see them. Did you ask their name? No, they were new. They were strange. They were weird. I didn't talk to them. I'm like, well, that's your job. Like part of your job is to like invite people and welcome them into God's house. You know, so maybe they were a Protestant or maybe they were someone from Protoban who'd never been here before, you know. So part of your job as ushers is to be the second wave after the greeters of hospitality and welcoming and accommodation into God's house, okay? 
Um, after Mass, just, you know, walk up and down the aisles, look for uh, missiles out of place, make sure that every single little pocket here has two missiles, two, two of these in it. Um, look for spared children's bulletins or regular bulletins. Look for, oh, look at this. You know what this is? What is this? A Cheerio. Well, I like to call it the seeds of faith. The seeds of faith means that there was a small child here, and that means that we have a future as a church. Seeds of faith, a little Cheerio. So, um, yeah, I don't know, pick up, sweep up, that kind of thing. Um, if you see a sippy cup down there, you know, put it in the lost and found, which is on that nice little wooden panel back there. So, um, straighten up, and then ushers should ask someone who is sitting near one of the side doors to pass up bulletins. Okay, yeah, so if you see a small child, usually they're kind of shy, but if you want to, like, hey, do you want to pass out bulletins? I've never seen that happen before, but anyway, that's number seven. So, um, yeah. Right, so these two doors right here are exits. Um, if you want to set some bulletins on the table there or on the choir cabinet there, go ahead, okay? But not too many because people should be leaving back there. Uh, thank you very much for volunteering your time and your skills, blah, blah, blah. Father Jacob's spiel about not returning back to normal. And then the guidelines for ushers in the event of emergency. Um, you can read all that on your own. Um, I don't want to, I don't, we don't need to talk about that. So fire, tornado, etc. All right. Any questions for me? Yes. Okay, so he asked for over, so I'm talking here because I'm live streaming. Uh, I, I kept that a secret, so <laughs> if, so people wouldn't know that I'm live streaming, that way they could skip tonight. But anyway, so uh, Bucky asked, does everyone know how to turn on the live stream downstairs? I do not know personally, so I think that's something that you guys can teach among yourselves. So live stream after COVID, or sorry, um, overflow camera and screens downstairs really only comes into play post COVID during Easter and Christmas, maybe Thanksgiving. Okay. So I would say talk amongst yourselves and teach each other how to do that. Okay. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. So, but it's basically turning on the TVs, turning on the sound system downstairs. So for overflow, but the goal is we can, Post-COVID, we pack as many people in here in the upper church as possible so that no one has to sit downstairs, you know? Okay? Yes, so ushers, um, I don't know what you did before COVID, uh, but lights will be, I don't want to make any sacristan or any usher come 45 minutes before Mass, but 45 minutes before every single Mass, I will be turning on the lights and lighting these candles and putting out the monstrance with the Eucharist in it. So no need for you guys to worry about lights. Except if you see that this little guy, the middle one, is off because uh, the way it's wired is that we have all the lights are wired to be controlled back there except for that middle light. So if you see it off during Mass, when Mass starts, when all the lights come up, that means that someone turned it off back there. So I think that light exists so that we can have some, you know, light in the darkness in like winter months. So a night light. Okay. Yeah. So if you see that light off, just notice it and then just turn it on in the back there. So that is the only light in the church that has two switches. Okay. So if you see it, flip it on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a parish there's multiple parishioners that yeah, there's multiple parishioners that take it upon themselves to turn these lights on, the St. Joseph and the St. Mary altar. Um, I personally do not care if these are on or off. The only thing I care about is that they match. 
So if someone turns on Mary's altar and forgets to do Joseph, then just go up and do it. If they're both off, I don't care. If they're both on, I don't care, okay? Just make sure they match, all right? Okay, anything else? Children's both. Really? Okay. So, um, what he asked is, is people ask for children's bulletins after Mass. Correct. Would go to the back, yeah. We kind of canceled that during COVID. Um, I could easily hand them to you, hand the leftovers to you during the offertory. Would you like that? I think that'd be fine. Okay. So, let's say that right now. So, during offertory... During offertory, I will hand you the leftover children's bulletins. And right, right. So I will hand that to them, then they can carry it back. Okay. Take children's bulletins. Okay. I'll just hand you the stack. Okay. That I think that works fine. Hmm. Interesting. I've never heard that. He said some people are fighting, fighting over them. Interesting. Okay. So, well, the it's good news, but it's more work. Um, Connie, in the office, has been printing. She was for a year and a half was printing about 150, 200 bulletins, and now it's like we need to go to 250 bulletins. Now we need to go to 300. You know, we're getting, we're pushing 500 now. So. I think that's the number. Anyway, that's good. That's really good. So, um, yeah, I'll make a note to bring and give you, whoever comes up here, the children's bulletins to walk back and give them. Okay? Um, I'll start now. So I'll, I'll give them to the ushers, bring them back. No, the servers does not do that anymore. Nope. So I will just give them to you. So, okay. Any other questions? If you think of something later, just email me or call the office. All right, thank you. See you later. And Connie was very impressed with me that I had a sign-up sheet, so... I mean, that's, that's, that's big. Okay, here we go. Okie dokie. Here you go. You guys want to share? No, you can you can have two. We got plenty. All right. Hi. All right, is everyone signed in? You count, you're fine, you're fine. Okay, let's begin in prayer in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us the opportunity to use our hands, our minds, and our skills to set up for your holy mass. Help us to use all the talents you've given us to benefit our brothers and sisters in this community and all those in the parish of Notre Dame. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. 
All right, thank you for coming tonight. Um, so there's some changes, depending on your duty, there's some changes and there's a lot of similarities between what was before COVID and then what is now and then what was during COVID. But my bottom line point is that I don't want to go back to normal. I want to be better than normal. I don't want us to go say, oh, we're back to normal. Everything's fine again. It's like, no, we need to approach life now with a new joy and a new gratitude. And so every time you see the pews with no ribbons, every time you come up and get to shake hands with each other, I want you to have gratitude. Okay? First and foremost. All right. So sacristan duties. Uh, sacristan has a very important job of setting things up for Father and for the altar servers and for everyone else involved it just makes things go smoothly, you know? So I have no control issues. Um, I've been uh, fine to do things myself for a year and a half, but it's, I'm really looking forward to like not having to turn on the sound system or fill up the chalice or whatever. So that's where you come in. So the first thing, uh, by the way, all this starts in August when you get scheduled, okay? Some, it's, it's kind of gonna be fluctuated. Uh, some of these jobs are starting immediately, like lectors, and then ushers are kind of half, and uh, Eucharistic ministers are now, but sacristans, until you're scheduled, you won't start until August. So what I need is um, these following items to be placed on the credence table. This is called the credence table, and this is the table of believers. That's what that term means. So the empty celebrant's chalice, which is the pretty silver and gold one, and then the paten. The paten is the plate that goes on top of it. Very good. The lavabo is the hand-washing bowl. So the bowl to wash hands, a cruet full of water, hand towel, and four gold saboria. Saborium, this is one, singular, saborium. And then plural is saboria. Okay? Okay. Please place the following items on the altar. The Roman Missal. The Roman Missal is the big red book that I read everything from. This will most likely already be here, so you don't need to worry about it. Also, uh, lighted candles. These two candles need to be lit, but because we have adoration beforehand, you won't need to worry about that either because I will have already lit them 45 minutes before Mass. So please place the following items on the table in the back of the church. One small cruet, where'd it go, of wine. And one ciborium of hosts. So for um, daily mass, you don't need to worry about this, but just so you all know, this is the people's host, tiny one, people's host, see? By the way, I'm live streaming. I didn't advertise that, but people's host, daily host, and then funeral, wedding, weekend host. Got it? Very good. Those can all be found back there. So if it's a normal weekend with nothing crazy going on, you will... Set this, and then this in the back. The ushers will take care of the money, so the bread, the wine, and the, the money will be brought forward. Okay? Yes? Well, um, that's a kind of a tough thing. Um, so the, uh, the, the absolute goal is that um, there's no leftovers, except for the sick. But we just have, um, you know, always have a lot of them. So um, just kind of keep an eye on how many people, like if you know that 300 people show up to 8 a.m. Mass and you know that there is, you're, you're scheduled for 8 a.m. Mass, then I would say just, okay, put 300 in there or in two bowls, you know. Um, it's just, yeah, so the math and stuff I'm not very good at and the logic and stuff, but um, just try to make sure that there's enough. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. 
the gospel. Um, no, altar. So when I finish benediction, benediction is this, as you see me doing. Then I take it here, turn on the lights. Altar servers are trained to bring this by itself over here so that the lector two or one or whatever can bring this up front. So yes, so no need to worry about the gospel on the altar. The altar servers will take care of that. Okay. So uh, before mass, lights will already be dimmed for adoration and Father will switch them on right before mass. No need to worry about that. Um, turn on the sound system. Do you all remember how to do that? Yep, there's the little key hanging there. Turn on one, two, three. Okay, good, good. Please do not touch, even if there's a problem, please do not touch any of the dials because they're all set specifically by someone who's even smarter than me who doesn't, I don't have a sound degree, so uh, don't, don't touch any of them. All right, make sure that there are bulletins in the back for ushers, and then check to see. So one of the things you're going to do is check the sign-up sheet, which starts in August, check which ministers are here and which aren't, and then you'll have the job of knowing all the people in the pew and then finding someone. So if you know that Jody Dole is a Eucharistic minister, then you'll say, hey, can you be a Eucharistic minister for this Mass? Okay, good, very good. Okay, so... And then following the 4 p.m. Mass, please take the money over to the parish office, lock it in the safe, and bring the keys back to the sacristy. Do you know, all know where those keys are? Okay, there's a key to the office in the um, cupboard in there. And then the key to the safe is... I'm not going to say it right now because we're on the internet. So you all know where that is. Okay. So after Mass, please hand wash and dry the four non-handled ciboria in warm soapy water. No need to wash Father's chalice because I take care of that periodically because I'm the only one who touches it or drinks from it. Take the collection, collection basket to the sacristy. Please do not extinguish the candles because the altar servers will do that. That's something that I want to entrust them and train them to do. And then after 4 p.m. and 10 a.m., turn off all the lights. No need to do it after 8 a.m. because the turnaround is 15 minutes and it's so quick and I'll be already on that, okay? So um, if you're at 4 p.m. mass or if you're at 10 a.m. mass and there's still like 15 people standing around talking in the pews and just hanging out and stuff, a really, really rude thing is to turn them all off. Okay, go home. I want to get out of here. Go home. Like, that's not what we want. Like, we want to be, <laughs> we want to be a welcoming community, and we want to, like, continue to let people, if they want to hang out here, that's fine. So sometimes there's some uh, canters and accompanists and friends that hang out here for 30 minutes afterwards. So, that's a little different because there's only three of them. But if you still see families here hanging out, like, just wait. Where do you got to go? I mean, your donuts are still going to be there, or your Susie Q's is still going to be available, you know? Like, just wait a few extra minutes, okay? Um, all right, after Mass, don't, okay. On the lights, please do not turn off the lights. Okay, yep, we're doing that. So if there's a mass with a baptism, and this can be found by either calling and asking Connie at the office or checking the bulletin, if there is a mass with a baptism, usually and preferably they would be during mass, so the things that I would like you as sacristans to set out is please place the large glass bowl inside the baptismal font, Onto the small table next to the baptismal font, there will be a small um, little pedestal here that I forgot to put out there. Um, a baptismal garment. Okay. Two hand towels. One is for oil, so I can wipe their head, 
and the other one is for drying their head after the actual baptism. And then the two baptismal oils, O-S and S-C, okay? The other one. So this stands for Oleum Sanctum, holy oil, O-S. The other one is Sanctum Chrisma, sacred chrism. The other one is O-I, oil of the infirm, anointing of the sick. We don't need that for baptisms or confirmations. So if you get it wrong, that's fine. I'll know it, and then I'll switch it last minute. So no worries. Um, but anyway, so make sure those are set out. That would be helpful. No need to worry about water or the pitcher because I'm going to train the altar servers for them to have fresh, hot water ready for the child because I think it's important to make it as close to a bath as possible. So they will do that during the homily or whatever. So no need to worry about petition or um, pitcher or water. So, the Easter candle. So, usually this will be done beforehand if the Easter candle um, needs to be lit. So, I would say if you see that it's not lit before a baptism mass or a funeral, take the stool and then stand up and then light it. Okay? Be careful. Or, you can very carefully take it out of its stand, bring it down to eye level, and then light it, okay? For a funeral, and once again, this will probably be done already, but just so you know, um, Stan Kepros took the time and made an incredible wood, oops, wood base for this thing. Before, it was just some atrocious thing. I bought at Fisk's with some vice grips and a towel that covered it. So it was awful. Anyway, so he made this and it's beautiful. So for a funeral, it's going to go right here. Okay. Once again, that will probably already be done, but just so you can be aware and spread the word. Um, it's tempting to want to put it out with a snuffer like this, but the circumference of this snuffer does not match this candle and therefore, you are dipping it in a pool of hot wax. It gets coated in wax. Booty has to clean it. She gets mad. I get in trouble. We don't want that. Okay? All right. Very good. Also, when so if you're going to extinguish the Easter candle, until we get spend the money to buy a bigger snuffer, just use this gold dish thing because it's bigger. Okay? Just put it on. Wait for it to go out. And take it off. Put it right back here. Finally, after the Easter candle, who knew this thing was so, you know, parsnickety? We need so much uh, training on it. Um, it's very tempting to want to move it right away. But look, look, there's hot wax that's going to spill all over the place, you know? And then that gets all over here. It drips all over. And then Booty gets mad. I get in trouble. Once again, keep Booty happy. So um, wait five to ten minutes for it to cool so that it's not a pool of wax that's sloshing all over the place, okay? So once it happens, then you can put it back. And the Easter candle will only be moved during, well, the season of Easter, obviously, but then also during a funeral. And like I said, that will probably already be done, but I'm just telling you that so that you can spread the word for how Father wants it to be done, because otherwise I'll get in trouble. Okay, next thing. Please plan on gathering in the sacristy with all other ministers, um, Eucharistic ministers and lectors, and yourselves, altar servers, and me, five minutes before every single Mass. Because I, this is what we did at Mason City when I was an associate pastor, and I just think it's a really good practice. You know, we all sign in, do our duty, and then scatter. You know, I think it's really cool for us to, like, join in prayer together before we do our work, the work, the liturgy, the liturgia. Liturgia is Greek for work of the people. 
And so we are about to participate, not just something we do every week, just because we're participating in the liturgy, which is the work of the people, which is what we do for our own salvation, our own thanksgiving, and the glory of God. So, five minutes beforehand, hang out in there. We'll see how that works. We'll pray together. You'll parade out here, go back to your spots. I'll do benediction, this thing, and then we'll start, okay? Any questions? Yes. Um, yeah, weekday sacristans, um, yeah, we'll put them in eventually. Um, I did not put the thought into them right now. So since you're a smaller number, I'll talk to you guys individually, okay, for weekday sacristans, okay? Yep. Sorry, thank you. Yes, so fun I, I was wrong. Funerals and weddings. Any wedding, the Easter candle will also be moved out. Okay? Yep, and then put it back. Be careful, all that stuff. So funerals and weddings. Death and new life. Depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Yep. Okay, yeah, so I will um, tell Connie, uh, his question was when there's a substitute priest when I'm gone, um, I will have Connie email you uh, so that you know to do the extra stuff, you know, because the new priest is not going to know all the nuances, okay? So if I'm gone for a vacation or something, Father Knipper's here, yeah, you'll and just kind of improvise and fill in that. But I will make a note to tell Connie that. All right, anything else, everyone? Yeah, just hot, yep, just turn it on hot. Yeah, the water doesn't get hot. I mean, the water is no hotter than a bath. So, yeah, I mean, oh. yes, if there's any missing ministry, the sacristan will find them. Two. So, two is basic for the weekends. And um, I usually keep a pretty good eye on that, honestly. So, like, for instance, I have one agreement with one family that if the daughter's here, then she serves automatically. You know, I could, I could find something to do for five altar servers, you know. So um, altar servers, yes, be aware of that, but usually I will already be aware of that. So yeah, yeah, yep, yep. At four o'clock, they're kind of slim. But um, so all I, I don't, all I need is one, honestly but it's nice to have two just for the inclusion, so. Oh yeah, you'll have a schedule. Yep, yep, the, the schedule will be back up there start come August for sure. Okay. I think she, she might be watching right now. Sorry, Connie, I'm volunteering you for a lot. <laughs> She's used to it. She can handle it. All right, anything else? Oh, yeah. Can we shake hands at the Our Father sign of peace? Oh, yeah. If someone extends your hand, yeah, absolutely. If you just do this, that's fine, but... Yeah, it's, it's a personal preference right now. So if you're comfortable, so I shake hands now after Mass and with the altar servers. So, but yeah, it's personal preference. So if you don't want to, then there's nothing that says, you know, sign of peace. It says we all offer each other a sign of peace. In the old, in the Acts of the Apostles, it was a kiss, you know. Then it was a hug, and now it's a handshake, you know. It just changes on the culture and the century, you know. So, yeah. 
All right. Anything else, uh, email me or Connie or call the office. So thank you very much, everyone, for volunteering your time and your talents. Okay, have a good night. See you later. Nope, thanks. <laughs>